So there is no greater financial or societal challenge to governments around the world than mental health disorders. Disorders such as depression, Alzheimer's disease, and other neuropsychiatric disorders rob the individual and society of mental capital and well-being. One in four of us suffers from a mental health disorder. Problems of Alzheimer's disease, schizophrenia, depression, mania, all of these disorders impact on our cognitive functioning. And this consequently impacts on our ability to look after things in our home and also to uh, work effectively. So we need to detect early. We need to detect these disorders early and treat effectively early on. And we can do this with modern technology such as iPads and also uh, we have neuroimaging technology that we can use. And this will help us and it's especially important to detect early for Alzheimer's disease because we are developing neuroprotective agents which will stop the disease process itself. So we want to put these drugs into people before the brain damage is done where they can still function in their home life and also have a, a good work uh, environment and, and do well at work. Well, we have two forms of cognition. One is cold cognition and the other is hot cognition. And cold or rational cognition helps us make most of our decisions in daily life. And hot cognition helps us with uh, social decisions and emotional decisions. And we can measure cold cognition objectively. And we can see that when we do this, it activates a neural network in the brain, which importantly includes dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. And in hot cognition, we can see that uh, that involves a different neural network, which includes orbital frontal cortex. Well, both hot and cold cognition can be affected in neuropsychiatric disorders, such as depression. And this is one of the problems for people being able to work. And that's why there's so much absenteeism when people are depressed or when they come back to work, there's presenteeism. Well, we have some drugs that can treat some of the cognitive symptoms that we see in some disorders, such as attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. So for instance, Ritalin or methylphenidate helps with some of the attentional disabilities that people have with ADHD. But it doesn't treat the whole range of cognitive symptoms. And we need uh, more novel drugs, which will be more effective and treat all of the range. So episodic memory problems that we see in Alzheimer's disease, problems with cognitive flexibility. And also we need uh, treatments for impulsive behavior, which can get us into trouble. So although we have some good drugs, we need better drugs. Well, there's a new area called neuroethics. And neuroethics is concerned with how new discoveries about the brain will affect our society. And I'm particularly interested in two aspects of neuroethics. One is the stigma attached to mental health problems. And the other is the increasing lifestyle use by healthy people of these cognitive enhancing or smart drugs. And we have to ask ourselves as a society, why are healthy people using these drugs? Why do they feel the need? Is it the pressure and stresses on us in our daily life and the global environment that we're working in that lead people to use these drugs? And in our studies, we have shown that people use them to counteract jet, counteract jet lag and exhaustion. They use them to get the competitive edge in the global environment. And they also seem to and, uh, make tasks that are somewhat repetitive or less interesting seem more pleasurable. So there's this range to why people use them. But governments need to promote um, good diet and exercise and lifelong learning because we know that exercise and lifelong learning will promote neurogenesis in the brain and this is the way we can promote good brain health. But also we can use new technology, these iPads. We can do cognitive training using iPads to ensure that we have good cognitive function and we can turn them into games. So we need to promote good brain health across the lifespan so we have resilience, a flourishing society, which is very important. And we need to start early because many of the mental health disorders start before the age of 24 years. So 
Really, we need governments to realize that mental health is every bit as important as physical health, and that through these new technologies, we can promote good brain health for all members of society. And this, in turn, will stop these debilitating disorders um, becoming chronic and lifelong and will obviously help the economy. So my question to you is, how can we ensure that we detect these disorders early and we treat them effectively? Thank you.